प्रति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोड़ चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय और बिलउट घनश्याम महाराज पाथमिक अठो लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाद गुरु जी एन ऑल ऑफ यू डेटिस जय स्वामी नारायण लास्ट संडे वे हैव लिसन पावर ऑफ वर्ड्स द पावर ऑफ वंस कैरेक्टर वंस प्योर कैरेक्टर वे हैव सीन हाउ सदगुरु श्री गुणादितानंद स्वामी चेंज वेरी डेंजरस पर्सन इनटू अ ड्यूटी ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण without using any kind of weapon without using any kind of trick or any other means gunaditan and swami made a very dangerous person a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that was gunaditan and swami's saintliness meaning sadhuta and because of bhagwan swami narayan's grace he had attained such a divine power that even he spoke only once to change the life and immediately hunja suru he changed he he become totally changed he had given up all of his bad vices meaning killing and animals and birds drinking alcohol he had given up all these bad habits and finally he become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that was also a power possessed by nan santo and some other kinds of power also our nan santo had finally these all kinds of powers these divine powers they came into the santo from bhagwan swami narayan but mara desire to show his divine power through this santo and that's why this all incident happened today we are going to listen some other kinds of power possessed by nan santo and we are talking about sadguru sri gopalanand swami even when sadguru sri gopalanand swami he was nearly a child at the time he even gave such kind of incident meaning he shows the people some kind of incident and like a miracle that everybody understood that this child is not an ordinary but a divine child but after accepting the refuge of bhagwan swami narayan after becoming a sant of bhagwan swami narayan even maharaj gave him the authority and gave him the power to so uh, so their people and the duty some kind of a miraculous incident but still many times most most of the santo they even before and today they do not like to use their power every time they mostly like to live on this earth as an ordinary human being still many times if they do not wish to show their power to others still it is only because of bhagwan's divine desire that automatically santosh divine power came into existence as well as came in our knowledge and came in our experience so in short bhagwan swami narayan santo never kill any living being but they surely kill the evil desire of the devotees 
there was a devotee by the name of sadasiv he was very staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and he was a follower of sadguru sri gopanand swami there was a town near anand by the name of khambar and sadasiv he was one of the wealthiest businessmen in the town there was not a single person who can be compared with sadasiv at the time because he he was such a wealthy businessman but in the town his wealth his property his business is not a fame for sadasiv but as he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan so all the people of the town they knew him as a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but not as a businessman why because bhagwan swami narayan had preached all of his devotees to live such a lifestyle that everybody can understood that this person is very gentle and genuine person everybody can trust upon a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan so this is what sadasiv by's background now as he was great businessman so once upon a time he desired to construct a new home for him and after getting blessings and agnya from his guru gopanand swami he started to build a new haveli type residential uh, residential building for himself at the time to construct a, a big house in india that was very costly and more than that sadasiv desired to uh, decorate his uh, this wooden home with a special carving wooden blocks as well as he also elevate this a uh, newly construct uh, construct pr- proposed building with a finely carved wooden blocks so that was very costly but as he was a devotee so the other person and in the life of devotees that is the great difference the worldly people they also build such kind of costly and heavy construction or building or homes but they have no any connection with bhagwan or santo on the other hand as in the life of sadasiv he was a devotee of bhagwan swami and so he first go he was uh, get the blessings and agnya from his guru gopalanand swami so this is our tradition without getting blessings and agnya from one's guru a devotee of bhagwan swami and should not do any single work in his life and if we follow if we getting uh, we receive blessings and agnya from our guru ji and after if whatever kind of work we are going to do we will definitely get a success we will get definitely get a uh, happiness from that work and that is why this incident so that you by also by his own lifestyle by his own thought he teaches that every single devotee should ask and get blessings from one's guru now after getting blessings he had started construction and after finish of the construction work of his house he again not started to live in new home not move from the old home to new home but he first went to vadodara he did gopanand swami's darshan and after that he requested he prayed to gopanand swami swami please come to my new home with all of these santos after you live there for some period of time then only i can go inside the home for living there but as 
सदाशिव भाई ही वॉज डिस्क्राइबिंग दिज ऑल थिंग्स हाउ वॉज हिज न्यूली कंस्ट्रक्शन होम मीनिंग हाउ वॉज द कार्विंग इन साइड हाउ वॉज द कार्विंग आउट साइड हाउ वॉज द वेरी कॉस्टली फर्नीचर इन साइड द होम इन दिस वे हाउ सदाशिव भाई डिस्क्राइब ऑल दिस थिंग्स टू गोपानंद स्वामी सो बाई लिसनिंग दोज वर्ड्स एंड मोर देन दैट गोपानंद स्वामी हैज अमनिस इन पावर and that's why he understood that so that you has a desire intense desire for his not only for his wealth but for this newly constructed building so that's not good for his liberation because after attaining bhagwan after attaining santo after attaining the satsang one should definitely be pure meaning one should definitely after removing all of his inner desire worship bhagwan so that is what our goal our main task to do and so that you had this kind of desire in his mind so his guru gopanand swami he was very aware he, he he was very cautious about it and that's why gopanand swami told him so that's you that's nice you have constructed a new building according to my blessings but now it is my desire to it is my desire for you to stay here for certain period of time after listening katha from me we all together will go there to khambat and reside there for certain period of time we all the santo sadasivbai said okay swami what were your wishes then sadasivbai stay there in vadodara every day gopanand he came to gopanand swami and whenever he came to gopanand swami Gop- uh, gopanand swami always preach him something about the something about that the these worldly things are not permanent meaning today or tomorrow all of these things must be perishable meaning must be destroyed so in this way gopan sir tree uh, teach uh, sadasiv bhai uh, about the perishable nature of these worldly things giving more uh, one and more examples so every day gopanand swami teach him that this whole earth made from a dust more than that gopanand swami told him that whatever come out from this earth meaning the trees they also originally from the dust more than that gopanand swami told him that the wooden block be received from the trees they also ultimately the dust because when we burn it then they become dust or ash that's also a kind of dust nothing so in this way gopanand swami every day tried uh, every day told him and teach him the perishable nature of these worldly things and finally gopanand swami only because of gopanand swami's desire that newly constructed haveli in the khambat anyhow because of any cause the fire uh, happened there in the haveli and the whole newly constructed haveli without using it for a single day it totally burned to us now the one of the person came from khambat to give this message to sadasiv because at the time there was no phone no whatsapp nothing that's why so one of sadasiv's person came there to vadodara to give him this message but this is happened because of gopanand swami desire so gopanand swami knew about this happening and that's why he went there outside the door and when that person came to give the message to sadasiv Gopan Swami asked him, "Why are you coming here?" Then he said, uh, "Swami, I have to give this message." And in this way, he saw the 
small letter to Gopanand Swami describing how the whole building is burnt to ashes. Now Gopanand Swami said, okay, you may go. Uh, I'll give this message to Sadasiv. And in this way, Gopanand Swami keep, uh, kept the uh, small letter and he put under the mattress. Now, after that, even after uh, after this incident, after burning the Haveli, Gopan Swami didn't talk single word about this burning of the Haveli to Sadasiv Bhai. And instead of telling this truth, Gopan Swami again every day teach the same thing. And even from that day, he asked every day to Sadasiv Bhai. Uh, the whole earth is made from Sadasiv said dust. Again Gopan Swami asked him uh, the trees which came from the uh, which develop and grow from this earth they made from ultimately then Sadasiv said dust. Again Swami said the furniture and the house made from this wood then Sadasiv said Swami ultimately they also destroy because when they burn into uh, ashes then that ultimately merge into dust. Then Gopan Swami said yes you are right. And in this way Gopan Swami is teaching Sadasiv got the true knowledge uh, about the perishable nature of this world. The not permanent. Uh, he understood that this world is not permanent. Even we as a human being we even one day will die. So what are the things remain or not? Even though this house remain, but if I will not remain, then who will see or who will enjoy this house? In this way, he understood completely this, uh, this truth. And finally, Gopan Swami uh, the small letter he had kept under the mattress on which Swami sat, he gave that letter to Sadasiv. Swami said, read this. Then Sadasiv opened the letter and he read that your newly constructed house without using for a single day, it burned to ashes. Then Sadasiv by cold folded his hands. He says, Swami, you are very great. If I am not coming here, and if I was there in Kambar, then if I heard about this message that my newly constructed home is burned to ashes, then I also maybe die. Because I have too much love for my newly constructed home because I have used, I have paid too much amount for that. But Swami, you are very great. You, anyhow, you know, anyhow, you knew about my inner desire for my property and wealth, for my this newly built home, and after grasping this my inner desire you every day teach me about the perishable nature of this world and you give me this understanding otherwise I will die I will not today remain alive Gopanan Swami say it's okay Sadasiv now what is your desire then Sadasiv Bhai said Swami now my house is burnt to ashes so it is not necessary for me to go there. Instead, I decided to stay here with you and I every day listen your talks, your katha. In this way, just as earlier I mentioned that Santa never kill a human being, not a human but even a living being, any living being, but Santa definitely kill once that inner desire. In this way, Sadhguru Gopanand Swami, by teaching, not by any kinds of weapon, not 
by using any kind of tree not by using any kind of black magic or hypnotism nothing copernicus is just every day talk regarding the true knowledge of our scriptures copernicus may preach only the principles prescribed and narrated by bhagwan swami narayan in the vachanamrit to the devotee but gopan swami has not a single not a drop of self motive in his heart and that's why whatever he talks whatever he say to the devotee the devotee's heart is accepted those words because those words has a divine connection of bhagwan because the truth remain in the words and that is why santo had this much power of words so by simply preaching about the perceptible nature of this world now you just understand i also preach to anybody about this perceptible nature of this world i also say there's uh, this whole earth one day will be destroyed according to our scriptures it is mentioned in the vachanamrit that this world is also not remain after many thousands of years even more than that we all knew about our own life that we are not permanent we also one day will die definitely will die still we cannot understand what sadashiv bai understood why because he had attained and he had completely associate with his guru gopalanand swami and we have not attained such the same kind of understanding like that of sadashiv why because we are not completely attached to our sadguru in the form of pujya guruji whenever we attach our own self to pujya guruji at the time whatever he preaches our heart accept those words even whatever he said not to do and only to do this then our own life automatically change according to his words but for that we have to firmly attach our own jeev to satpurus whenever this happen in our life then our life become like a walk the talk meaning our life become what his words so in this way in this incident in this charitra of sadguru sri gopanand swami he simply preached to a devotee and devotee's inner desire they automatically removed from his heart and now his heart is completely become pure meaning uh, his heart become a uh, pure meaning without any kind of worldly desire and if one has no any single worldly desire remain in one's heart bhagwan definitely forever stay in his heart and now so that you enjoy the divine bliss of bhagwan swami and inner happiness eternal happiness forever in the day so this is what sadguru gopanand swami's power of speech many other incident many many other miraculous incident also uh, uh we can learn and we can see from sadguru gopanand swami's life but today by this incident we can learn at least many many things but some of the points from today's discourse one without asking or without blessings from our puja guruji we should not do any single task in our life second thing if we done whatever whatever work or whatever task we have performed only because of his blessings and according to his agnya we should also in all way we have to inform him about our progress or our accomplishment of the work and finally also get again his blessing the uh, an 
another point from this katha that whatever our sadguru whatever sand teaches whatever they says us we have to accept those words as a truth and if we cannot understand any single thing then ultimately we have to at least understand whatever they says whatever puja guru ji says to us he'll definitely give us happiness if we follow his words then that will definitely give me happiness if we understood this much then then after the last point is that if we attach our own self to our sadguru then he'll definitely remove all bad habits and bad worldly desires from our heart and he install the murti of bhagwan swaminar in our heart this is what the summarized point of today's katha sri ganshyam maharaj ni jay तव मूर्ति विनोदारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ओ माइडी the path maker to our liberation and our almighty bhagwan swaminarayan our puja dear guruji puja santo puja bhagat and all of you devotees jai swaminarayan when maharaj comes on this earth there are certain qualities that he shows that are extraordinary some that are seen directly and some that can only be seen with a divine sight out of the 39 attributes bhagwan possesses the 
the second attribute after satya or truth is daya or compassion. It is obvious that Maharaj or Bhagwan himself stands for truth, doing the right thing over the wrong thing. But sometimes the second virtue, compassion, comes ahead to number one. Meaning the virtues that Bhagwan possesses, they don't have ranks, but as I said, some virtues stand out more than others. There are many, many charitras in Bhagwan's life where he has shown this, you can say, attractive, emotional, and very, you can say, soft nature of compassion. And due to that, his whole, you can say, divine personality was remembered by countless. I'm reminded of a charitra where Bhagwan used to travel from one village to another in the region of Kutch along with his santos. The name of this charitra is In Our Happiness Lies His Happiness. In Our Happiness Lies His Happiness. Let's see what this title has to say. So, starting the story, Maharaj used to travel from one village to another in the region of Kutch, along with his santos. Kutch is located in Gujarat, northern Gujarat. It's a very uh, extremely uh, arid, deserty, and very, very hot place. It's, it's just considered desert. Scorching heat is probably the best way to describe that region. One afternoon, after he had his lunch, Maharaj was preparing to leave for the nearby village. It was scorching heat, and the sunlight was blinding. Maharaj had wore his slippers, but the santos were walking barefoot in the unbearable heat. As soon as Maharaj saw this, he removed his own slippers and gave it to the beggar who was sitting by the road. He also started walking barefoot with the santos. Now, if a regular person or a devotee or even another saint had slippers, and other saints or devotees did not have slippers and were walking and considered to take them off since they didn't have them either, then it would be a very, very, you can say, uh, a kind gesture. That person could be even said that is more, you can say, selfless instead of selfish. But the Supreme Almighty Lord who has come all the way down from Akshardham to this earth and only for a short period of time, 49 years, lived in a human body and did numerous, div performed numerous divine incidences, performed such kind of a, a charitra or you can say proposes such kind of a gesture only Bhagwan himself can do this because regular people who have authority sure may be able to do it but Bhagwan his authority Bhagwan his greatness and still showering compassion upon santos that's a very great feat and in the night time in Niyam Cheshta we sing in Pratham Shri Hari Nere, there is a verse, Dukhyo Dekhi Na Khamai Daya Aani Re. Dukhyo Dekhi Na Khamai. Meaning, he cannot witness anyone in pain. These are Bhagwan's, uh, you can say, qualities. And due to, due to that, he cannot withstand them. He has to relieve his pain by making the other person, the opposite person, happy. This was Bhagwan's nature. 
And in numerous incidences, I can say without a doubt, our Puja Guruji has the same exact nature. How so? Well, I'm reminded of an incident where Puja Guruji was traveling long distances and, and one time in a in a car and he must have uh, seen a very very poor beggar without you can say even the slightest bit of clothing or anything and Pujya Ranshur Bhagat was driving and he told Ranshur Bhagat to stop immediately Ranshur Bhagat stopped slowly and then he must have passed the the, the beggar he reversed the car and Pujya Guruji said stop Ranshur Bhagat came outside, Puja Guruji also came out and saw this beggar. At there, at that time, Puja Guruji took a little bit of information of, you know, what's your name, these simple kinds of questions. And then Guruji felt at compassion. So in the car, he told Ranshur Bhagat there was prasad that Puja Guruji was caring to give to others in the nearby locations, Haribhaktos, he said, give all the prasad to this beggar because maybe it can last him a week or two. And then, one cannot believe this feat. Puja Guruji, he told Ranshur Bhagat to take out his suitcase, like bag, and all of Puja Guruji's clothing, not Ranshur Bhagat's clothes, Ranshur Bhagat's clothes were also available in that car. Also, another son was with Puja Guruji as a pair, and his clothes were also available to give. No. Puja Guruji took his own clothes out, three pairs, told Ranshur Bhagat to take them out and give them to the beggar. Now, a beggar wearing saint's clothes, that wasn't the motive of Puja Guruji. Puja Guruji saw that this person was suffering from extreme heat during the day and extreme cold during the night. Due to that, he felt his pain, just like how Maharaj felt the pain of his santos when they were walking barefoot on the scorching heat, just like we, if one were to walk on coals. And just how Bhagwan felt that pain, in the same way, Puja Guruji felt the pain of the beggar. And due to that, he took his own clothes out and gave it to the beggar. Not only that, first he gave him prasad, second he gave him his clothes, but not only that, third, he told Ranshur Bhagat to tell the driver, or he told Ranshur Bhagat himself to take out some rupees and give it to the beggar. I don't know the exact figure, but all these th three things just to relieve the pain of an unknown person on the street has not ever chanted the name Swami Narayan, does not know the glory of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, does not know who Bhujya Guruji's name, proper name is, or who he is, but just out of compassion, sheer compassion, he gives everything away and leaves without anything a, not even a trace not even saying or giving his name that I am this I am I have this many disciples I have I have uh, this many institutions here in India as well as uh, outside of India no kind of information meaning Buju Guruji's pure intention was to relieve the pain of that person that was sitting out in the street in the heat and in the cold. In the same exact way, Sriji Maharaj's, you can say, nature was e uncomparable. But Puja Guruji has definitely, you can say, or definitely has taken on the qualities of Bhagwan. And we can say this by Bhagwan himself says in the Vachnamrut Gadara, first chapter 68th that I forever reside in the eight types of murtis and in the sun. Not only that, but Maharaj himself says, Santa hune hunte vadi santare, ema shri mukhe kahe bhagavantare, 
संत मान जो मारी मूरति रे तेमा फेर न थी ए करति रे भगवान हिमसेल्फ कंसीडर्स द सन टू बी वन विथ हिम एंड देयर इज नॉट इवन अ स्लाइटेस्ट एटम ऑफ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सन एंड भगवान हिमसेल्फ दैट्स हाउ मच ग्रेटनेस that's how much you can say the glory of a true sadhu is but continuing on to the story they came across a tree since they were all exhausted it was it was decided to take they decided to take a nap underneath the tree before resuming their journey this this was when maharaj laughingly said oh sadhus Do you remember the time in Amdavad when you used to go and ask for alms in the terrible scorching heat where your feet used to get burned just like right now? Maharaj asked this kind of question. The santo said, "Maharaj, that is true. However, you were not you were not present with us at that time." Santo said this, meaning santos must have traveled to Amdavad and bhagwan himself must have been in a different village so santos were be- uh, begging for alms and they were in the same situation where uh, barefooted and were tolerating the uh, the scorching heat of the sun and due to that one of the saints said that maharaj you were not with us at that time maharaj replied i was present i was there and i will always be there for you and with you when your feet burn my feet burn too when you get hurt i get hurt as well meaning bhagwan is saying that anything that happens to you that also happens to me that's how much compassion bhagwan has you can say for santos but this is a type of daya it's a type of uh, compassion that no one can even see and nishkuran swami in his hari smriti has said aaj sudhi pan mari jeevan janu chu rakho chho khabar sari jeevan janu chu pade pade karo pratipad jeevan janu chu bijo evo kon dayad jeevan janu chu bhagwan himself takes care of his santos just like how a mother takes care of his baby no matter what in any kind of situation and we can see this now don't think that bhagwan only takes care of his santo this discourse is for you to gain something well you should also understand that the devotees of god consider are considered santos male hari bhaktos female hari bhaktos everyone so everyone is considered under that underneath this category so bhagwan looks after those but who follow his rules who worship him day and night who believe him to be supreme and the all doer all these characteristics have to be matched in order for bhagwan to stay with us and to help us in each and every way so these talks didn't convince the santos at that time but they were definitely true if his devotees are hurt or are in any sort of problem maharaj feels the same pain as well they later on continued their journey and arrived in the town of manavadar in saurashtra here mayaram but asked maharaj where are your slippers maharaj replied all of my santos are walking barefoot i couldn't see them in pain Therefore please go and arrange for slippers for all my santos. Mayaram but immediately went and got slippers made for all the santos including Maharaj. This is how Shri Ji Maharaj cares for his devotees and is always present for them. This is just a charitra, a very simple charitra of Bhagwan taking off his slippers due to seeing his santos not wear slippers, but just think about how much principle it teaches one think about how much compassion bhagwan had for his devotees so we should understand this factor and you know pujinis kam swami when he preaches to us santos he 
teaches us that whenever we're eating something good, you can say uh, if it's a thar, uh, one of the days uh, Hari Bhakto has sponsored a thar and or you know anything, uh, for example jalebi or any uh, kind of item, and when we are partaking in that certain item we should connect it directly to our Puja Guruji and think that when I'm eating this Jalebi, what is my Guruji eating at that time? When we go to sleep, we get a good seven to eight hours of sleep. Then when we wake up in the morning, we should have a thought that if I slept seven to eight hours, has my Puja Guruji also got seven to eight hours of rest? anything and everything while taking a shower when we receive hot water think about has Puja Guruji also received hot water while he's staying in Loya waking up early in the morning at 5 o'clock when we think in this manner we start to develop a connection with the Ekantik Satpurush directly also you can say connecting with Bhagwan because the Ekantik Satpurush and Bhagwan are not two entities, they are one. As Bhagwan has said, Santa Hune Hute Vari Santare. But considering that factor, when we think about the Ekantik Satpurush, his feelings, what he is doing, how he is, when our mind starts to tangle around him, his you can say incidences, his charitras, then just like how Bhagwan is inside the Ekantik Satpurush, the Ekantik Satpurush comes and saves us from numerous incidences in our day. It's just a matter of seeing. If we can see it, then we would be so thankful. If we cannot see it, then it's good to believe and understand that this is what it is, but I cannot see it. But by connecting with in Ekantik Satpurush on this kind of level one can join with him and ultimately leading to joining with Bhagwan. and even in Swamini Vato Sadguru Gunatitan Swami has said a beautiful Vat where he says that Bhagwan is always in the protection of his Bhakta just like how the eyelids protect the eyes just like how you can say the hands protect the neck just like how a mother protects her child just like how a king protects his people in the same way Bhagwan protects his Hari Bhakto meaning Santos, Bhaktos, everyone well analyzing this talk a little deeper as the eyelids protect the eyes let's think the eyelids are forever in action they do not sit still true how many, how many times do you, do you blink while reading this sentence? I'm reading from an article. How many times do you blink in a minute? Each of those times, your eyelids are working to clean and protect your eyes. And they do this for, the ho for their whole life, you can say, for your whole life. Also, when something comes near your eyes, immediately, your eyes close. In the same way, Swami gives an example of eyes. Second, he gives an uh, uh, example of hands protecting the neck. The hands too act instantly, and they do, and they avoid uh, our whole body from risks. If anything dangerous danger comes flying at above our neck, your hands will come up, and a shield will be kind of blocking your head and your neck. So this is also, you can say, human nature automatic. Not only that, a mother protects her child. No matter what trouble her child may be in, a good mother is always there for her child. Why? Hands and eyelids do not have brains of their own, but a mother has options. She can choose not to put her child first. She can choose not to sacrifice, yet she always chooses to put herself second to her child. And Puja Guruji has the same exact nature as well. Always considering others, always considering his sadhus, his disciples, his Haribhaktos, 
first before himself. And we can see that how so through his living conditions right now. We can see that how so through his sleeping time. We can see that how so through his eating dietary, you can say regimen of only eating every two days once, which he's on a fast right now. We can see so many incidences while how he's putting everyone first. And might I add that the very reason why he's doing this, you can say vrat, this fast of Dharna Parna, it's called, for the past two years is for the sake of others, not for the sake of him, his self. And Puja Guruji himself considers his devotees to be first in any and every circumstance. And lastly, kings protect his people. Very easy. Kings always protect his people in the same manner. Bhagwan always protects his devotees. And Bhagwan always protects his devotees no matter what. Therefore, one should understand Bhagwan's grace, one should understand Puja Guruji's grace, and finally, one should understand that Puja Guruji and has done so much for us. And we should not forget that His grace is always upon us. Shri Gansham Maharaj Nijay